so let's, let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you so much for an amazing first day of SCW yesterday, Lord. And we just, uh, we just ask that today would be even more and even better, Lord. Let your work be established in the lives of each of these students. And today especially, Lord, we pray for students um, who might be far from you uh, or who have never made a commitment to follow you with their lives. Uh, Lord, let today be that day for them. If there have been some students, Lord, who have uh, been hearing all that the, the Bible teaching in Bible classes and, and chapels, but have never said yes to Jesus, let today be the day of their yes. And uh, Lord, we will just give you all the praise and glory for that. And Lord, as we start out this day uh, in this CEU, we just pray that you would challenge our hearts and uh, Lord, help us. Uh, to be motivated to steward this day well. We love you and we thank you for it in your strong name. Amen. Um, all right, guys, let's look at Mark 10 today. Uh, and I'm going to just read the verses that you have before you, uh, not to insult your intelligence, but just so we can be on the same page with this, with this story. So you can follow along with me. Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? That's a great question, right? Um, so Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. Um, it's interesting here, right, that, that, that he really skipped the first, uh, uh, the first commandments and, and he went to the last commandment. The last of the Ten Commandments all deal with how we treat others. Uh, he's, Jesus sort of left out the part about how we, how we relate to God. Uh, and, and, and listen to his response. He said, Teacher, all of these things I have kept for my youth. In other words, as far as it is for me and the relationships that I have others and with others and the way that I treat others, I'm good. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come and take up the cross and follow me. Uh, but he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Remember, Jesus sort of left out the first of the commandments. Uh, Biggie, you shall have no other gods before me, right? And obviously this guy uh, had some things in his life uh, that, that even though so many things were good, uh, earthly possessions and, and his earthly drive was in that place of God in, in his life. Um, but he came to Jesus with a great question. And, and I think there were so many things that were right about this, this story and right about his pursuit. And yet it falls short. And, and I think we, we can find that in our own lives. And I think we uh, can see that in, in other people as well, especially maybe people that we are discipling or that we are trying to help along. So many times they get so many are so many parts of the equation right, but it's easy to miss out on, on some of the biggest. So let's look at, at what he got right. Uh, he came at the right time. Uh, he, was, he was young, right? The rich, young ruler. Uh, statistics tell us that, that most people who make a commitment to Christ do so very young in life, right? Uh, and so this is why what we do is so important uh, here at BICE because shaping the lives of, of, of students, shaping the lives of people when they are young and helping them to get uh, a mindset that looks towards God when they are young is so, so very important. Um, 
I think it was Amy when she was given a devotional that gave some of the statistics of how many people come to Christ before the age of like 16 or 18. And, and I think it's, it's, it's very high. I believe it was even like 80% of people who make a commitment to Christ do so before the age of 18. Uh, I think that kind of statistic really ought to inspire us in the work that we do in education and in uh, teaching our kids the Bible and, and, and pouring into them in times like uh, SCW, we really have an opportunity to make a lifelong impact upon these students. Well, this rich young ruler came to Jesus at the right time. He was still young in his life. Um, he came to the right person, right? He was kneeling before, before Jesus. Um, and, and how many, how many people, um, are for lack of a better term are looking for love in all the wrong places, right? Uh, this guy came to the right place. He came, he came to Jesus. Uh, and he even asked the right question. What must I do to, uh, inherit eternal life? Uh, that's, that's the right question if you're standing before Jesus that you want to that you want to be asking and he received the right answer Jesus told him what he needed to do what he needed to do now now we need to understand that this wasn't about selling everything he had and giving it to the poor Jesus Jesus was using this part of his life to deal with the heart situation and and as I said earlier uh, to deal with sort of that last stumbling block that was in his life of the things that he was putting before God. And we'll come back to that in, in just a moment. Um, so, so many things were right about this, about this story. Uh, he, he was there at the right time, talking to the right person, asking the right questions, getting the right answers. But, but he made the wrong choice. But he made the wrong choice. Um, he turned away from the Lord after the Lord spoke into his life and uh, couldn't follow that one command and walked away way sorrowful uh, from him. And it cost him. And it cost him big. Now, we've probably all heard this story before. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to spend too much time um, belaboring that, that wrong choice that, that he made. I just want to give you a few short lessons from this in these, in these last five minutes uh, that, that I think are helpful to me and I hope in some way are helpful to you. Uh, the, the, first, the first lesson that I, that I get from this story is, for me at least, is it's impossible to find fulfillment in things. It's impossible to find fulfillment in things. And, and boy, we're, we're sure good at trying. Um, Things, things can bring us comfort. Um, like even, even, this, even this morning coming in, uh, just, just feeling the, the, the fog as I, was, as I was riding in on the bike. And I, was, I, I started looking around and, and picturing, wow, you know, if, if, I, if I close my eyes, which probably isn't a good idea on the bike, but I'm wearing my helmet, Clarissa, so it's sort of okay, right? <laughs> Um, it almost feels like a good fall day in where I'm from, right? Um, that sort of brought comfort to my soul for a moment. Uh, no, uh, we, we, it's easy for us like, to find these little temporary moments of comfort in, in things or in moments. Um, but the reality is we can never find true fulfillment in, in things. True fulfillment uh, true fulfillment can't be found in the stuff we accumulate in life. True fulfillment can't, can't be found in, in the situations of, of life. Uh, Jesus Christ, and this is number two, Jesus Christ alone, Jesus Christ alone can satisfy and bring fulfillment. Um, things cannot do that uh, no matter how hard we try. Things cannot do that. Um, a few weeks ago, I was I was running on a on a weekend, and uh, I was on a long run. And uh, I, I got to tell you, um, I mean, I I was I was tired. I was like exhausted, and it's 
For me, I, I tell you often, I mean, it's just one of those issues I struggle with, with pride at times. Um, I told you about the offering going by a couple weeks ago when we were together. Well, when I'm running, I struggle with pride like so many times it's pride that just keeps me running because I don't feel like running. And I think, well, if I stop, as soon as I stop and stop, start walking, somebody from Bice is going to drive by on their motorbike. And they're going to see me walking. And even though I've ran all this way, they're going to think I was walking. And I can't have that. So I don't keep running because I feel like running. I keep running because I'm stubborn and it's pride in my heart, right? Well, uh, I was on a, a, a long run. And... Um, it, uh, I, I just, I needed a break, right? So I, I go into Indomart in the middle of this run and I get a Picari sweat and I get back out on the road and I'm like, man, I just got to walk it for, for a bit, right? And so I'm walking and this little rascal, little local kid comes running up beside me as I'm drinking my Picari sweat, says, Mr. Mr., why are you walking? <laughs> oh my goodness. I, uh, I mean, it just. <sighs> and, and of course, I, I put the water bottle in my, in my pocket and I'm like, uh, start running at that point, and I, th I think, <laughs> I think to myself, you know, this kid didn't know a couple of things. <sighs> but I felt like it was God leading me to show him a couple of things. No, no, I'm Num Number one, this kid didn't know where I'd been. Like I had already ran 20k. And this little run of a kid had never gone 2K in his life. And he's making fun of me, or at least I'm taking it personal, that this kid is making fun of me when I've already gone 20K and I just needed a break. All right? I just needed a break. He also didn't know where I was going. I still had another 10K to go. You're right. And so I, I still have a long ways to go. And I just like if I was going to get there, I just I just needed I just needed a break. Um, you know, I think life is like that so many times we get consumed by what other people are thinking of us. When the reality is no one knows where you came from. Like they might look at you and you might feel like they're looking at you with judgment about some area of your life. The reality is they have no idea how far God has brought you. They have no idea how far you have come in your life and overcoming obstacles. And you know what? You might not be ahead of everyone else, but you are way ahead of you where you were when Jesus found you. They also don't know where you're going. Like... You, you, they might be looking at you in judgment and you might be taking it personal. It might get you down, but you can't lose sight of the fact that it's God who's put a vision and a dream in your heart and they don't know what you're going towards. And so when they're sitting back and you feel like there's that sense of judgment upon your life by them, you can just hold your head up and know, you know what? I know where God has called me to go. And it might look different to you because it's not where God has called you to go. But I know what Jesus has for my life. And so as long as I'm following that, I can be secure in that. I, 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 can, I can be okay with that. Jesus alone. Like people can't bring satisfaction and fulfillment to us because people... Even the people who know us best sometimes don't know all that we've been through and don't know where we're going. But Jesus knows those things about us. Like Jesus knew everything about this rich young ruler's past. That's why he could get to the issue that was deepest in his life. 
because he knew him better than anyone else. He knew he was good, but he knew the issues. And Jesus got straight to the issues because he knew where he was been. He, he knew where he had been and he knew where he needed to go. Only Jesus can satisfy and bring fulfillment in your life. And lastly, to receive all that God has for you, you must give all that you have to God. Now, this story isn't about selling everything that you have and giving it to Jesus. It's about a simple point that Jesus, Jesus wants all of our life, not compartments of it. He wants all of it. And he's not asking us to go empty our bank account. Maybe he would for some of us, but but. He's not asking that of us uh, most of the time. What he is asking that he has every compartment of our heart and that he knows that if any time he did ask us to do something, that we would be willing to go and lay it all down for him. And this look, this, this, this giving it all to God looked like three things. Sell all your possessions and give it to the poor. What matters most to you? Is that surrendered to God? Is it relationships? Is it security? Is it the, the dreams of your life? What, what is it that matters most of you? Ask, to you? Ask yourself the question, have I surrendered that to Jesus? Like, does he have full control of that in my life? And then Jesus said, take up your cross. In other words, uh, following Jesus isn't a life that's supposed to be easy. Like sometimes we paint it as follow Jesus and everything's going to work out perfectly. No, Jesus said there's a cross to bear. There's a cross to bear. So when you're going through life and life feels like hard or there's a heavy weight upon you, don't think I must be out of the will of God. It could be that you are right in the middle of the will of God and you're just feeling the weight of that cross upon you. All right, that's not a bad thing. That's often a good thing and a great indicator that we're following Christ. And then lastly, to, to give it all, he said, follow, follow me. Follow me. Who are you following? You following your own dreams? You're following your own desires? Are you following what you want or what somebody wanted for you or what maybe family has projected onto your life? Or are you following Jesus? Because you'll only know true fulfillment when you're following after him with everything that you have. Let me pray for you. God, we love you and we thank you so much for this day. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to find true fulfillment in you and to learn from the rich young ruler, Lord, that uh, it only comes when we surrender everything to you, when we're willing to take your cross up, and we're willing to follow after your will and your plans. Help us each to do that and help us each, Lord, to instill that kind of vision into the students that we have an opportunity to mold day after day. We love you and we thank you for it in your name. Amen. Bless you guys.